Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constandinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Earlier this week, China's President Xi Jinping visited Moscow to speak with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The two international leaders met on Tuesday to sign an agreement to expand their economic ties. Putin said after his talks with Jinping that Chinese proposals could be used as the basis for a peace settlement in Ukraine. In a joint statement, the leaders cautioned against any steps that might push the Ukraine conflict into an uncontrollable phase, adding that there could be no winners in a nuclear war. China's proposal, a 12-point paper calling for a de-escalation and eventual ceasefire in Ukraine, lacks details on how to end the war. The U.S. has been dismissive of the Chinese proposal, given Beijing's refusal, refusal to condemn Russia over Ukraine, and says a ceasefire now would lock in Russia, Russian territorial gains and give Putin's army more time to regroup. Last Friday, the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin for war crimes, accusing him of personal responsibility for the abductions of children from Ukraine. The ICC said any statement that Putin, quote, is allegedly responsible for the war crime of unlawful deportation of children and that of unlawful transfer of children from occupied areas of Ukraine to the Russian Federation, end quote. Its practical implications, however, could be limited as the changes of Putin facing trial at the ICC are highly unlikely. Based on data from Ukraine's National Information Bureau, over 16,000 children were deported. Ukraine has managed to bring back, bring back 308 of those children so far. Governor Maura Healey announced last week that the state's remaining COVID-19 public health emergency orders will end on May 11th, the same day the federal government's emergency will end. Healy mentioned rescinding the vaccine mandate for executive branch employees and moving away from public mask requirements inside healthcare facilities. That order will go away on May 11th as well, leaving the decision on masking up to individual facilities. By May, the federal government will stop buying COVID-19 vaccines, which means many people will either have to pay out of pocket or use health insurance. The free at-home test kits via the U.S. Postal Service will also end. The state is closing the final 11 Stop the Spread PCR testing sites by the end of March. Although the state is not reporting daily COVID-19 health trends anymore, the Mass DPH is still monitoring and reporting health trends on a weekly basis. On March 16th, newly released metrics show that over 57,000 molecular tests were conducted and 2,612 new positive cases were reported in the last week. As of March 14th, 128 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 47 are in the ICU. 49 new deaths were also recorded in the last seven days. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. If you're 50 or older, it's important to stay up to date on COVID vaccines. Boosters greatly reduce your chance of severe illness, hospitalization, and death, and are an important defense. Even if you've already had COVID, schedule your appointment today at mass.gov slash COVID booster. Welcome back. Now let's get into more in the town of Braintree. The Braintree Town Council held a meeting last night, which mainly served as a follow-up to the Clean Harbors fire. Here's Sarah Hamilton with more on the meeting. During the February 16th fire at Clean Harbors, firefighters who rushed to the scene found that the closest fire hydrant wasn't working, along with the hydrant in the facility. Dutton Lewis, the water superintendent of Braintree, explained that the hydrant wasn't service, it just lacked pressure, which is why the fire department wasn't notified. The Town Council President, Meredith Berica, made a request to the Water and Fire Departments during the meeting. Here's what she had to say. I would request that we get some kind of an audit on fire hydrants and or low flow pipes because especially to hear that Quincy Ave has been a continual problem in the most industrial part of town with multiple high hazard industries and it was a known problem. Um, certainly is cause for concern to me. Um, and so I, I'm hoping whether, whether it goes to the DPW committee, public safety, or comes back to the full council, 
as a resident, a parent, a counselor, I certainly want to know that the hydrants and the water are working at all times and we need to understand how the communication is working between the water department and the fire department um, and that it's consistent, it's clear, and there's a plan of action. Mike Foley, Senior Vice President of Plant Operations at Clean Harbors, stated during the meeting that Clean Harbors had started reoperating last Wednesday after getting approval from MassDEP. Greg Cooper, a director at MassDEP, went over approval of operations at Clean Harbors during the meeting. This is what he said. And then lastly, uh, on March 15th, uh, we authorized the resumption of activities at Clean Harbors for, um, and I think that the last meeting Clean Harbors mentioned they have three distinct kind of operations. One is called the bulk, bulk loading uh, operation. The other is drum storage activities. These activities do not take place where the fire occurred. They're in different buildings. Um, and we did say, we did restrict no, uh, we did not authorize the uh, activation of the truck to truck, what we would call the truck to truck operation, which that is the building six where the fire occurred and the trucks in the dock next to that. Um, that activity is still not in operation now. Um, and will not go into operation until we kind of have a chance to come to an agreement on what type of safeguards need to be put in place so that uh, this, this incident doesn't happen again. Thanks, Sarah. To watch the full town council meeting, you can visit our YouTube page at youtube.com slash bcamtv in the town council meeting playlist. Or you can watch it on our government channels on Comcast Channel 8 and Verizon Channel 26. After Native American artifacts, including tools and a fire pit, were found during excavation on the site of the new Tritown water treatment plant, work came to a halt. Now under a new permit by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, excavation work is expected to resume next month under new conditions. The engineers, an archaeologist, and up to two representatives, each from three Native American nations, will oversee the soil removal to check for any more artifacts. Helen Gordon of Environmental Partners, who is overseeing the construction, said since the stop was ordered, even more artifacts have been found at the site. Any more artifacts found will be cataloged and will eventually be buried at an undisclosed location nearby. Once the Massachusetts Historical Commission and the Corps approve an oversight plan, the work will resume. Due to a recent fire, Clean Harbors cannot operate the Spring Household Hazardous Waste event scheduled for April 29th in Braintree. An exact date has not been set for the event, but the company plans to postpone the event to the fall. Because the town is a member of the South Shore Recycling Cooperative, Braintree residents may attend events being held in other communities. For information and to register for them, go to braintreema.gov recycling and click on Household Hazardous Waste Event. It's time to renew your dog's registration in Braintree. The town requires that all dog owners must register their dogs each year. The 2023 dog licensing period runs from April 1st until June 30th. All renewal requests can be made either online, in person, or by mail. You can visit BraintreeMA.gov for more information and to find the online registration form. Braintree also announced that its annual rabies clinic will be held in May though the exact date has yet to be announced. The clinic will be held in the Town Hall side parking lot and will run from 10 a.m. until noon. For more information, you may contact the office of the town clerk at 781-794-8240. Braintree will be holding a free Mindful Families event for Braintree residents sponsored by the Braintree Community Partnership in April. The event's focus is to teach methods for reducing stress, improving focus, and managing emotions. The event is meant for, children's, for children ages 8 to 12 along with the company of their parents or caretaker. The Mindful Families event will take place at Braintree Town Hall on Sunday, April 30th from 1 to 3 p.m. For more information, you can visit BraintreeMA.gov. The Town of Braintree announced it will be celebrating Greek Independence Day on March 25th at the Town Hall. The Town will host a flag racing ceremony and wreath laying ceremony. 
Afterwards, you can head inside to the Cahill Auditorium for an array of foods, dancing, and activities to celebrate Greek culture. The event will be held on Saturday, March 25th, starting at 3 p.m. For more information, go to BrantryMA.gov. For those who can't attend, BCAM will be there with a camera getting all of the highlights for a special to be aired later. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Every home needs a basic emergency supply kit. It should meet the unique needs of the people who live there. Your kit doesn't have to cost a lot. You probably already have many of these supplies, and you can get others at a discount store. Visit mass.gov slash be prepared. Welcome back to Braintree Today. According to a new report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, cases of the tick-borne illness, babesiosis, have increased sharply in the last decade. Unlike other common tick-borne diseases like Lyme disease, the disease, caused by a the disease is caused by a parasite that is picked up by ticks and transmitted to humans. A study showed a 193% increase in the disease from 2011 to 2019 in Massachusetts with more than 16,000 cases. Illness can range from mild to severe and it can be fatal in rare cases. Infections can also be asymptomatic so patients may not always know they need to be tested. To protect yourself, the CDC says those spending time outdoors should practice tick bite prevention, including wearing long pants, avoiding underbrush and long grass, and using tick repellents. The $15 minimum wage has barely started, but a new Massachusetts poll suggests statewide support for another minimum wage hike. According to the results of a new poll, 59% of Bay State voters said they would support raising the minimum wage in Massachusetts to $20 an hour. The Change Research Survey polled over 700 Massachusetts voters last month, many of which voted to increase the minimum wage. Bills filed by Senator Jason Lewis and State Representatives Tram Nguyen and Daniel Donahue would raise the minimum wage by $1.25 a year until it reaches $20 in 2027. The wage would then be tied to the Consumer Price Index starting in 2028, so it automatically rises alongside inflation. The bills would, effect, would, be, would effectively double the lowest wage for tipped workers to $12 an hour. On Sunday, the MBTA announced the Green Line would join all other lines in a return to, no to normal speeds, although every line will still have block speed restrictions, where tracks need to be examined more closely for safety issues. Interim General Manager Jeff Gonville said he made the call to slow all trains down until inspections of all tracks could be completed. About 18% of Green Line tracks would still see some kind of speed restriction. Police wearing body cameras has become a hot topic over the last few years. On the South Shore, only a few communities have adopted the cameras as a normal practice. Since the summer of 2021, Weymouth police officer, officers have worn body cameras after the town approved spending nearly $775,000 over five years to lease the cameras, patrol car video recorders, and related equipment. Other South Shore Police Departments are just starting to come around to the idea, such as Randolph and Hingham, who recently launched body-worn camera programs. Chiefs in other departments, including those in Quincy, Marshfield, and Braintree, said there are no current plans to have officers wear cameras. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Want a year of no-cost birth control with just one trip to the pharmacy? Access, a Massachusetts law, can make it easier. Get more control over your birth control. Find out if you're covered. Learn more at mass.gov slash birth control. Welcome back to Braintree Today. This week in entertainment, we have two movies and a TV show to celebrate Women's History Month. First up in entertainment is A League of Their Own, which tells a fictionalized account of the real-life All-American Girls professional baseball team. The film takes place during World War II when America's stock of athletic men was depleted. Publicity-hungry candy maker Walter Harvey decides to fund a professional all-female baseball league in the Midwest. The film stars Gina Davis and Tom Hanks. You can watch A League of Their Own now on Peacock. 
Next up in entertainment, Legally Blonde follows fashion merchandising student and sorority girl Elle Woods. The film begins with Elle getting broken up with by her boyfriend because he believes she isn't serious enough for him. In an attempt to win him back, Elle proves she's capable of all the things he is and gets accepted into Harvard Law School. You can watch Legally Blonde now on Hulu. Finally in entertainment, The Queen's Gambit follows the life of Beth Harmon, an orphan girl who is taught chess by her orphanage's custodian. The show is set during the Cold War era and focuses on Beth as she struggles with addiction in a quest to become the greatest chess player in the world. The show stars Anya Taylor-Joy and can be watched now only on Netflix. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides and thank you for watching Brainshoot Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.